Ooh, what is up guys, I'm Gorzu. Welcome to, well, the quarterfinal in TBU when we're going up against Monotoy or the Tampe Luxray. And to be honest, going into this game, shit. Like, I knew from the last time the Tampa Bay or Monotoy actually destroyed us. And he, he, he won with the 1-0, but it was a very, very controlled 1-0. And I had a different set in mind for this specific game. If you haven't seen my battle analysis, make sure to check that one out. And of course, check out Monotonius, both his team analysis and of course the battle itself. Now, having that said, uh, he brings pretty much the same team as uh, I predicted outside of being in Kyurem instead of the Inchi, which I think is fair. Um, Kyurem Black is actually really good outside of my sister. Uh, Kyurem Black actually destroys us, Ghana. Uh, so that's something that I'm being very, very aware about. I myself is going to bring Drapion for the lead, basically to hope that it brings Curran Black and in some fashion kind of will it down in some fashion. But, you know, we'll see what happens. But outside of that, I need to play very, very good against the Manathon this time. I need to play better. I have Shed Shell this time around because, well, let's face it, uh, I lost my sister really early in the previous game. So if I lose sister, he wins the game. And that's pretty much the same premise as it was last time. So knowing that, ah. Uh, I knew I had to play a bit smarter than I did previously, and against a player such as Monotoy, that is not that easy to do. I mean, he's a very, very powerful trainer, and to be honest, going into this game, I had, well, I was just hoping that something would work, because like I said, he's a very good trainer. So anyway, with all this in mind, guys, let's go. So right, like I said, from the get-go, I'm going to leave with Rapion, kind of hope that whatever I knock off is something important. Now he's gonna lead off with Cure, and I was thinking, oh, nice. That means at least we can knock off the Scar, which is gonna be extremely important if that if he decides to stay in and go for Earth Power, which he is doing. But I am faster, so we're not speed time, uh, or we could speed time. But we're aren't here, right? Knock off the Assault first, which was somewhat surprising. But then again, that ensures that he can take the Septile's Dragon Pulse. Now we can kill it with Septile, which is awesome. But here's the thing, I can't take another Earth Power, boo, I can't even take an Ice Beam for that matter. So I'm gonna decide to switch up to Scissor, seeing that it's very likely that he'll go for, well, an Ice Beam. That seems to be the obvious point here, which it does, and we're gonna soak that uh, not well. I mean, I'm fully special defensive, it still does a lot of damage. Uh, it is a crit after all, but still, it did hurt, which I was not really seeing. Now, I'm just gonna go for Bullet Punch, not predicting anything, as it goes for Blastoise. And, yeah. We can't touch that. We, we simply can't touch that. And I can't really get out efficiently. So I'm going to go off for a hard switch and switch in, of course, Heracross. Basically, baiting for a skull here and hope that with that skull, that at least, you know, we can get the guts boosted. Uh, but he's smarter than that. Of course, he is, right? And it goes for Ice Beam. And that is extremely unfortunate. But a skull does not necessarily take us out from this range. So, I'm just going to go for Sword Stance, I know what can set up against the Blastoise, and no matter what he's switching, we can actually still speed it, he goes for the Gligar. And this is important, because we have, of course, Gespa Berry to be able to have Hidden Power Ice at 100 base, which is enough to one-hit KO, of course, the Gligar, and it does stay in here, and we get the KO on the Gligar, and get the sweet, sweet revenge from our previous game, and that is extremely important. Uh, so with that said, you know, he's gonna bring, of course, Kirin Black here. I cannot take an Ice Beam. There is no way in hell I can take a modest or mild Ice Beam for this guy. Uh, so I have to switch out. I need to be the stronger player. And I decided to go for Scissor and no one Ice Beam is on the field here. And um, here is where I sadly do a small mistake, because it goes for Ice Beam. That is actually fair enough. But I was hoping that he's gonna switch out to the Blastoise. I went for a Super Power. And he stays in, go for Hidden Power Fire. And don't have Aqua Berry, which means that he will bop the Scissor. Which means things happenings. Like, there is simply not so much I can do here. Now, my Sceptile does have speed. Malik, of course, the monstrous, monstrous man that speaks with his back is gonna, of course, ensure that we force out that Stan or Kieran Black. I'm just gonna go for Dragon Pulse. There is no reason for me to really, you know, force myself to do an over prediction here. I could have gone for Toxic Shaw, but. At this time, no. Um, I really, really need the damage on Juram Black. And since I don't have self rocks, there is nothing that he's going to be punished by by doing so. So I'm forced to switch out, of course, as I'm going to Drapion. Drapion can take on, of course, Cresselia. Nothing really big to it. And uh, he actually going to or, or pull a double on me and go back to Juram Black. And I was like, oh shit. Alright, so he got Drapion too. Fantastic. That is exactly what I wanted. So I go for the Earthquake, I'm basically over damage. I have nothing on my team that can take the Ice Beam. I don't intend to try to take it either. 
and your drape from here is gonna fall, which is unfortunate, but like I said in my previous analysis video, it's either everything or nothing for drape in this game. Yeah, it's gonna bring back, of course, the man himself, Malik, and this time he's actually gonna stay in. You know, it's one of those things, like, he either over predicts or he stays in, and he does stay in here hoping that I go for a less effective move, which I not. I'm definitely want to cure him black out, and I got it. So, he's gonna bring here, of course, the Scolipede. And knowing from a previous game that we had, I had substitutes, so I'm not gonna pull any punches here, I'm just gonna go for Dragon Pulse, hoping he thinks I'm gonna go for a substitute, as he goes for the Poison Jab, which is extremely important. Uh, now, after this turn, we see that he doesn't have Speed Boost. That's important, obviously, fearing that I could trace it, and it's not like he needs to speed anything on my team anyway. Uh, so I'm just going for Alpha Max, and due to my defensive vestment, I know I can take a Poison Jab at this range. But he gets the max roll, and that is so close of killing us. As I basically go for another quake. Now I could have gone for a Swords Stance here, knowing life we would kill him. But I wouldn't want to risk it, of course, switching into Magnus on this range is obviously is scoffed. Plus, I kind of want to bait him, go for Volt Switch, and that is exactly what it does as I bring, of course, Thunders. And I'm just going to say that's it, guys. Due to him go for Volt Switch there, and I can set up a nasty plot, that is. Pretty much GG. There is nothing he can do. Even if he has Ice Beam, of course, on Cresselia, um, he can't one shot us in that this range, sadly. And I finally pushed, of course, a mighty, mighty Monotone into a corner. Uh, and I say that with, of course, a glimpse of uh, irony because I only win because it did a few old predictions and I actually had, of course, Hidden Power Eyes or Natural Gift Eyes on Heracross. That's the only reason I win this game because I think his team is super, super good against me, but this was not a game against, you know, who has the strongest team. It was definitely a game of who does the right prediction. Last time I lost it, and I lost it barely. This time I win, but I win it barely, and I think we are still an even match. Even though I end up winning this specific game, I still believe Monotoy plays a really, really good game, and I only win because, well, it was my day. It is basically what it comes down to. He, of course, got the scissor out of the way, which made Magneton somewhat um, ineffective for my team. But at the same time, I really needed scissor to stay safe throughout this game. Now, I am, like I said, I am somewhat lucky, and I do a few good predictions with Sceptile and whatnot, and the, it ends up winning me today. But this game, while it's a 3-0, it is still one of those 3-0s where it could have just turned 1-0, because Funders was the only effective mod left with this matchup in mind. So having that said, you know, Monotoy, GG and whatnot, I do believe, like I said, that you are just as good or worthy to win this game as I were. So, what is worth, GG man. So yeah, you know, what else can I say? Um, yeah, Monotoy plays the game exactly right, and while I do get a few things right in this specific game, I won't really deny that the previous game were, well, just as close, and uh, this victory is as much worth as that one, even though I do progress here to semi-finals, and I don't really know who I'm facing yet, but whoever it is, things are gonna get down and rough really early. The ones I'm facing next round are two people I've faced before, it's either Eric or Rissipau, so yeah, staying somewhat um, stressed out till then. But yeah, uh, as far as this game specifically go, um, I guess the only thing I could kinda catch, of course, um, um, Mono is, is that he stays in with Kira and Black, not switching yet again out to Cresselia. I think he had the option to do so, but I do believe at the same time that he, he made the right call. Like, he has he had uh, reasons to stay in with Kira and Black, hoping me to predict and go for Leapstorm and whatnot. So I could see what I was trying to do, and I don't really disagree with the play. It just, it's one of those things that I do believe becomes a very, very decisive factor. But then again, my Thunders is faster. And I still have Focus Blast, which obviously could miss. But I still have options left, but Sceptile definitely got the denting efficiently, uh, or the denting well, uh, with this in mind. And I kept Thunders healthy. I needed it healthy for, of course, Scarlet Peter had Rock Slide or Poison Jab. At least take those hits. But yeah, I do believe the, the big deciding factor is that Gligar gets out of the way, which ensures me that I can spam Thunderbolt, that Heracross can go freely for close combats. Stuff like that just pawn down throughout this game. And it it won me the game. Uh, it is at that simple. It is a very, very early like prediction that pretty much ensures me the game. And um, like I said, Mono did not play a bad game. I just won, you know, the predictions game. At least this time. He won that two times before, even for TBU. 
So finally got my wrench on him, but at the same time, I can't really deny that he played his game exactly right. So with all that said, guys, I think we're supporting with Gotham Guard Garchomp. Don't forget to check out Monotoy's channel uh, and his side of this specific battle. I'm definitely looking forward to see what went through his head, at least with the Gligar uh, situation. Uh, but yeah, with all that said, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm still, like I said, on vacation, so expect not too many uploads throughout this specific week. But yeah, until then, guys, or, you know, till next time, take care and whatnot. Bye.